Hi guys. So today in the second Volti optimization session, we'll talk about a very important feature, which is robust header compression, ROHC. This is very important for Volti because as we discussed pre previously, Volti has a very big packet header. So to reduce that header, robust header compression is very important. So before going further, let's understand uh, how compression works and how context-based compression works. So let's take a, s a basic example. Um, I really like this example because it is very simple and it explains how a context-based uh, compression works. So let's say I have these seven digits, uh, seven numbers. So 17AA01 up to 17AA08. So normally what I will do is that I will transmit all of them and then the receiver will receive all of these packets, all of these numbers. But uh, with the compression and the decompression based on context, this is how it will work. So the first whole uh, number will go through the compressor and it will send it to the decompressor. Now looking at this, they will establish a context. Now what's the context? A context is something they will check and see what are then the numbers that or digits that are static that are not changing so in this case 17aa0 is there in all of them right so the decompressor and the compressor they will establish a context saying 17aa0 is the context and then the next time the compressor will only send number 2 3 4 5 6 7 and 8 that's all while the decompressor every time it gets this number or this digit it will add 17aa0 in front of it and then it will generate all of this sequence just like this right so every time it gets two it puts 17aa0 in front of it and makes the full number 17aa02 similarly when it gets 8 it adds the context 17aa0 and it makes it 17AA08. So it recovers all the actual sequence that was there. So over the air, we only transmitted 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And the decompressor decompressed it using the context already established to get the whole sequence, which was the input. So let's say what was our compression ratio. So if we count the number of digits in the input, total digits are 48. So we use the context 17AA0 and the number of digits we actually transmitted over the air were only 13. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 plus 7 these, this makes it 13. So uh, what is the compression ratio? 48 minus 13 divided by 14, 48 is equal to 72 percent. So we can say that with this context, our compression ratio was 72 percent. That means we only sent around 28% of this uh, sequence over the air and the decompressor was able to decompress it successfully. So this is how a basic context-based compression works and uh, we can see that we achieved a good percentage. Now ROHC, how much uh, percentage it achieves, let's have a look. So if you remember uh, in our capacity estimation video uh, for Volti, the capacity planning video, we discussed about a particular example, which was AMR wideband 12.65 wide band codec. And we discussed about its uh, header size and its payload size. So if you remember that, if you remember we had IPv4 header, then it is around 320 bits for the header. And the IP header, the UDP header, the RTP header, it's around 320 bits. And the payload for AMR wideband 12.65 codec is only 253 bits. If we talk about IPv6, then the header is even bigger. We see 480 bits of the header, while again, the payload is still the same. So what we see here is that we are losing a lot of our capacity just to the header right while the actual payload the actual thing that the actual actual volty payload the actual speech that we talk in the volty packets is just a small value right so what what the rohc does it only focuses on these header values and compresses them so if we use rohc on this then it will look like this you can see this packet it has gone down 
to a very small value, right? Only 1 to 2 bytes. 8 to 16 bits is equal to 1 to 2 bytes. Similarly, for IPv6, the compression is pretty similar. So only 1 to 2 bytes for the header. So both IPv4 and IPv6 headers can be compressed from a very big value to a very small value. So if this is 320 bits, it went down to 8 to 16 bits. If it is 480 bits, it also went down to 8 to 16 bits, which means 1 to 2 bytes. So the packet size overall has reduced dramatically. It has reduced significantly and over the air we can see that we have reduced our overhead. So if you put it in the network and you have this codec, so this is how it will look like. If you uh, put volty bits per packet and you put plot them on a daily level, so over here we can see that there were around 600 bits per packet on average and once we activated vol uh, ROHC it suddenly dropped to around 270 bits per packet. So that shows a big improvement in the volty bits per packet uh, and it because it has not impacted our actual payload so this is just the reduction in the overhead of the header. So it really helps us a lot. Now let's have a look at it from an end-to-end -end perspective to see uh, how this works out. So let's say this UEA is talking to UEB making a volty call. So the traffic the UEA, UEA is speaking, so it is sending traffic to the E node B. The E node B is sending it over the backhaul layer and then to the target E node B and then to UEB. So this is where my traffic is flowing. Now how does it work? Let's say this is my, uh, again, uh, a packet. We have 40 bytes of header, 30 bytes of payload. So UEA, when it's sending out the packet over the air, it will apply ROHC and it will send the packet like this 30 bytes of payload and only one byte of header so it has compressed a 70 bytes packet to only 31 bytes right then the e node b will receive it it will now decompress it on its side and send the full packet 40 bytes of header 30 bytes of uh, payload of volty payload over the back hole now this e node b will receive this packet again and before sending it over the air it will again compress it and only 30 bytes of payload and one byte of header is being sent again and the ue gets it ueb will again decompress it before sending it to the higher layers again it will get 40 bytes of uh, header and 30 bytes of packet so this is how the end to end uh, compression flow looks like uh, in rohc network so what we have done here is that on on the air over the air we have reduced the packet size now this reduces the overhead for the over the air transmissions but it also improves our uh, volty uplink quality how is that because this let's say this ue if it is sending the whole packet then it's a bigger packet that means it will need more resource blocks that means it will need more power right so the power per sub carrier will be higher so a ue that is power limited will be sending this packet on a lower power so if it is sending a smaller packet it means that it has more power to send it right so for instance if this ue has uh, 10 milliwatts so it will be 10 milliwatt divided by a bigger packet right while if it is a smaller packet so it will be number less number of sub carriers so 10 milliwatt divided by a smaller number of sub carriers will be more power per sub carrier so if you look at it from a network's perspective what will happen is that if you look at the uplink kpis you will see that the uplink blur will reduce so when you have rohc off you have a higher uplink blur for volty but when you enable it because the packet size is smaller now so the up UE will have more power per sub carrier to send the smaller packet. So ROHC on will have a smaller, a relatively lower uplink blur. And it also might have a relatively lower uplink packet loss. So ROHC, not only does it reduce the packet overhead, it also improves uh, the uplink KPIs so that uh, the uplink blur and uplink volty packet loss can also improve. Now it does not really improve the downlink KPIs because in the downlink the power is fixed 
and it is equally distributed against all the uh, subcarriers so there is no improvement from the downlink perspective but of course there is improvement from the overhead perspective that we are not using the whole packet that means lesser PDSCH overhead that means more PDSCH capacity and that means that there are more resources available for other users to use. So overall ROHC is a must-have feature for Vault T optimization uh, and it improves in multiple uh, factors. So hopefully I think uh, that that would be all for today. We'll continue with our Vault T optimization sessions and uh, for that stay tuned. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.